Good morning and welcome and joining me in this beautiful morning in Vancouver. And I was supposed to be accompanied by first my colleague, Eric LaJoy, but he bailed out because he's in Germany. He doesn't want to travel to Canada, I guess. And other partner is one of our partners in this domain, the CEO and the founder of AOPS One, Abdurrahim Suslu. Unfortunately, he got COVID, so he couldn't make it. So I'm by myself. Hopefully, I can address all your questions. So today, before I go, you may think who this fella is. This is me. I am originally Turkish, born and raised in Turkey. I've worked around the planet, including Sweden, China, Dubai, US, UK, beautiful places, beautiful people, challenging projects, multiple companies like if you remember, there was a company once called Nortel Networks. And then Ericsson, Canonical Ubuntu. And then Verizon as a platform engineer for Verizon Cloud. Then Google Cloud for two and a half, three, almost three years with the Anthos and all that. And then Red Hat. Almost reaching to three years in Red Hat. Let's cross the fingers. You know, you never know what's going to happen this year. Because... <clears throat> Before we all go, one of the major existential threat to us this year is cost optimization, year of efficiency. So how do you how do you do efficiency with your workloads, with your deployments, with your services? It's mainly about collecting data, how your systems are doing. Are they addressing your customer needs and consumers? Are they matching with your SLAs? In order to do so, the observability become at least more and more important, and this year is everybody's talking about observability, but not necessarily everybody talking about the same thing in, under this keyword. The majority of the surveys, if you look at the, what these companies are doing, is mean time to recover between the incidents is, can be lowered to at least 40% if you have a good observability solution. You may have a better mean time between failures, more than 50%, if you have a strong observability capability. And as by Gartner, the 60% of the enterprise IT organizations will have some sort of observability solution. Another point, before we go more into details, please raise your hand. You're here because of the keyword observability. One, two, three, four. Please raise your hand. You're here because of the keyword 5G telco. All right. All right. Not matching. Man. The, the hands raised for observability is different than the people for telco. That's, that's, that's a good mix. So last year, we did similar session in Berlin in Open Infra Summit. And we talked about a couple of solution options, which we'll go briefly over them too. So what has changed from last year in Berlin to here by means of work we had done in Red Hat as a Red Hat internal as well as with partners and customers is mainly around, okay, observability is about collecting data to understand where we are, how our systems are behaving, but what data I should collect? How shall I gather that data? How shall I store that data? How shall I use that data? And am I com do I have enough talent in-house to crunch that data to create some insights? Because everybody thinks that, okay, I have ML and AI solution, I have a data, I can create insights. No, it doesn't work like that. So when I was at Google, people come in and saying, hey, please help me to monetize my data. Okay, you're coming from pharmaceutical background, from a logistical company, telco. A lot of telcos came and say, help me monetize my data, i.e., help me create insights valuable to sell, valuable to use out of data. Unfortunately, I can, as a technology provider, I can provide you tools and frameworks, but since I don't have your domain expertise, I cannot by myself create those insights for you. You, as a telco people, mostly here, you have the domain expertise. Data engineers or root people, we have to work together. Data engineers shows you what data out there, how to clean that data, how to make that data valuable for the machinery that you can use with your domain expertise to create insights for yourselves. OK? 
Okay? What if you don't do it? <laughs> so, <laughs> year of efficiency doesn't necessarily mean that you are allowed to fail a lot. So what happens if 911 outage happens? This is real metric. If you go to the, the void.community, you can see that the, a lot of incidents happen mainly around the mistake of making normalization of deviance. You know what that means? So it means that in the previous session, there was a session where our beautiful friends from Starlink project showed that, hey, that they are pulling some metrics and data out of the IPMI for showing the, say, the, heat, the current heat, current network interface card status, right? When you're looking at your Datadog Splunk or Grafana dashboards, and someone comes and says, hey, Fatih, what's wrong with this red button? There's something is, is flickering here with the red, and you may say, you may say that, yeah, that's about the heat of the CPU on this particular server from farm. And you know what? That thing has been there for ages. It doesn't necessarily mean any, anything. So it means that I'm normalizing an incident occurrence, i.e. I'm ignoring it. So what happens if you ignore it? It's mainly back to the, the Apollo 11 crush, right? The outer ring, if you're familiar with that crush, what happens is they were launching the rocket in Florida. That morning, the outer insulation ring froze. And the, unfortunately, it wasn't predicted that that rubber material, the material, will be vulnerable for the, that much of a heat change. And then the heat, due to the heat change, even though sensors were showing, hey, there's something abnormal happening, the control room said, hey, you know what, this has been, we have been seeing the sensors alarm all along. It doesn't mean anything. Let's keep going. And what happened is the, the fuel leaked, and then we have a major incident. The same with the interesting thing in this picture is in the right side, you see the Datadog, right? So Datadog has their own issues with outages, even though these, this is a very well-known and very respectful observability platform, i.e., everybody is vulnerable if you ignore and make the, all these incidents or errors become a normal for you. All right, 10,000 feet for holistic full stack observability view. So what are we aiming here is mainly not for addressing the application layer, 5G telco applications, but also the what is beneath, uh, beneath it, such as the platform, Kubernetes, OpenStack, VMware, or direct bare metal deployments, beneath the hardware layer beneath the network fabric, okay? Everything has to be considered as part of observability. Because at the end of the day, if you're seeing an alert tying together as a data mesh and you can see that there's something wrong with the performance of my 5G stack. Say my AMF is not addressing new GNBs to register over SCTP interface. There's a performance issue. But performance issue could not necessarily be about the AMF application's performance could be something about the network fabric is choking because it has been flickering for fail failover redundancy on the network fabric. So we have to have a full understanding of from bottom up and use that data to correlate each other and then identify or predict what's coming your way. The core values of observability, observability solution so observability is not a product, obviously, it, it, because it encompasses a lot of layers, like we talked from network fabric, OS, platform, application layer. So it is a combination of multiple solutions tying each other and offering you a value. We started our journey, this conversation, about being year of efficiency. Please raise your hand if you have noticed this year in your company layoff? Come on, be honest. There are only, only a few. Okay, raise your hand if you have been told that the budget you were supposed to get this year chopped down, say, at least 25% for spending. Wow, this group is really rich. Well, you know, they're hiring, they have no issues, they're spending millions of dollars. You must be from a pharmaceutical company or, say, from a company that's making Aircraft carriers for war economy. Those are two major industries never issue with the money or banksters. So mainly around, if you observe and understand level of traffic coming your applications, you can scale on demand. 
using observability because you're gonna, it's gonna tell you the level of CPU utilization, memory utilization, versus the demand from your consumer side. That's the important thing for scalability, for capacity planning and scalability. So proactive monitoring, alerting, root cause analysis, it is tying into, let's be ready before something happens. So what does, what does that mean? So say a lot of, a lot of solution blu blueprints include storage underneath, right? If you remember, if, you're, if you were here for the Starlink demo, you, you will see the storage on each worker node. Storage node could be hard drives, SSDs, and VMEs. Everything has a lifespan by means of I.O. and write and read. So if you look at the specification of the hardware, it says you can write this many times, you can read this many times. So what if you're reaching a limit of write on your storage and your edge clause is about to go because you cannot write your, say, application state into it? So you will not be able to recover from it. Even if you say, I have a store, you know, I have a backup solution, like in the previous case. It, backing up in the local storage and your local storage drive is about to die anyway, so you cannot restore it. So what I'm hinting is able to monitor lifespan of your hardware together with the metrics collected every layer, you can predict those coming your way. And we'll show you some couple of good examples. All right. Raise your hand if you heard the term service mesh. Oh, that's pretty good. Please raise your hand if you heard the term data mesh. OK, so it's both phrases have the common word mesh, meaning services correlating each other so you can understand the chain of services coming together to offer you an, an, an consumable service or, or a portfolio. Data mesh, on the other hand, is more of a graph theory that you can associate each data piece with each other, some sort of a relation. Like in this diagram, you can see that there's a data governor, there's data cleansing, data certificator, enrichment anonymizer, and network ops, and external API. So these are all each data points by doing something different with the data and changing the state and the format or the content of the data, but they are related to each other with this relation. So what does this mean is you are collecting data from multiple endpoints and trying to associate with them. Say, I collected data from network fabric, OS level, switches and routers, and an application layer. And I can associate them with this mashing, with the data mashing. And I can see the impact of each data on other data format or, or other data consumer or exporter. So I can predict and I can make better judgment because I'm in enriching the data. All right. Last question, I promise. Who, please raise your hand if you heard the term OTEL or Open Telemetry. Awesome, all right, good job. This is really important, this is neat. why this is important. One of the key challenges in data engineering is the format of the data, how you're collecting, how you're exporting, how you're processing. There have been a lot of ways to do that. Making this more standardized way is what Open Telemetry is about. Standardizing the way to generate, collect, and process, and pass along that data is what is Open Telemetry is about. Open Telemetry is not about only specifications. Open Telemetry also offers you utilities and instrumentation to be used by your code, okay? So you don't need to write those instruments for yourself. So this is becoming really critical because in early days, telco folks, remember the term called OSSBSS? Operation support systems, business support systems. You can call, Ericsson has their own OSSPSS solution, Nokia has their own, and then the MDocs came and they offer some other OSSPSS solutions. What I'm hinting is each vendor has their own way of collecting, generating, and processing and sharing of their data. If, uh, this is a special question to telco folks. Raise your hand if you know the term called CAMEL. No, so anyway, so CAMEL kind of supposed supposedly born in the open source domain with the sharing the specification, but becomes so proprietary between vendors that Ericsson data could not be really used and be compliant with the other vendors' data or systems. So open telemetry hopefully addressed that ch challenge for making common way of collecting, generating, and passing along that data along the different state of data mesh and data processing. I usually don't talk. And that's one of the key things my wife complains. Why are you so quiet? Is there something wrong with you? I say, I'm a man, I don't talk. 
<laughs> okay? I looked at, when I looked at the ceiling, I'm thinking, and she says, what's wrong with you? I said, nothing wrong with me. And when I go to conference and I talk this much, and I feel like I'm kind of lying about myself <laughs> to my wife, but anyway. So another approach. Data could be generated by the existing application stacks and the oldest stacks we talk about from Network Fabric up to the application layer. One of the key things in the data engineering, this part, is three factors about data is important. One is the velocity of the data, i.e. fresh data, the volume of the data, i.e. big data, and the variety of data, i.e. I have a lot of different variety of data that can correlate to each other to build a more enriched and sophisticated insights for you. So what if your existing data sets is not really good enough to create valuable data, data insights for you? Then you may think, okay, then if I have a data set here and I can use ex external data to enrich this decision making, that would be a great case, right? So in US, starting with the President Obama, there has been a policy about making data open in the United States, open data initiative. That includes from weather forecast, weather, so the humidity of the soil, you know, who is going which hospital district, and all that. All open data is out there for you. And some of that data could be useful to enrich your decision making, or you can say, I'm going to use external tools such as application performance testing, APT, and collect that data to pipeline into my decision making to make more insightful decisions. In this case, the Dosify, for example, offers you global latency measurements from variable endpoint into your applications. So this born in multi-gaming, online gaming world, because online gaming is so sparse, gamers are around the world, but yet they are experiencing latency, right? They are ex experiencing quality of service issues. So what this Dosify offering does is, I want to test my application, which is sitting, for example, in Vancouver, but the people close to Vancouver, I want to measure the latency from, say, from Toronto. Not necessarily I want to measure from Seattle or Dallas. I want to measure from Toronto. So Didosify allows you to initiate your latency measurements based on your geography selection and measure that latency dynamically as, as pre-planned or on the fly and feed that latency measurement into your decision making. So what does that mean? If your application is suffering because of a traffic increase, but the local metric is not giving you that insight, this latency will show you that, hey, there's latency increasing for the people sitting in Toronto or, or say, anywhere in Ontario. So then you can say, oh, this is, is it because the application couldn't scale up or is it because there's a backbone fiber issue within Canada? Right? And then you can try another trigger latency measurement from Washington, it's a different fiber backbone. You may say, oh, this latency is better. So there is a backbone issue within Canada between these geographies. So what can you do? Okay, deploy another set of applications on this cluster close to, say, Toronto. So you can make these decision making based on this external data sets. All right. Do, do, do. Uh. So data can be collected from a platform layer. In this case, what you're looking at is OpenShift Console. And we can collect data based on a platform, namespaces, tenant namespaces, and feed into our dashboards. As well as we can offer you network-centric view with NetObserver Operator, which is based on eBPF agent we offer. This is an open source project, and also offered through an operator. And free of charge, you go download and use within your, within your cluster and clusters. And what you're seeing here is, is two different cluster sets. One is this one here, which has the open 5GS, SMF, UPF, and, and signaling gateway, another UPF. And another cluster up there is talking to each other for UPF, uh, local UPF breakdown from a central location. So we are showing network interactions and net, network base metrics between each interaction services from a single console. So that's very good. What you're seeing is network-centric observability. Fine, this is good, still platform layer. Another thing is from a service mesh perspective. Since 
there are a couple of folks who were familiar with the service mesh. Service mesh, especially with the ones around the Istio or Linkerd, is based on a concept called sidecar. Sidecar means that there is somebody attached to your workload and that the traffic coming in and out goes through that dude. He is like a gatekeeper. And since there's an external entity sitting in front of you, that person, that agent, or a sidecar collects the metrics for you and reports their central location. This is basic overall 10,000 view of a service mesh. Now there's another service mesh com coming along which is called ambient, I'm gonna put that aside. But main concept is sidecars intercepting the traffic and talking to each other to give you this perspective of network visualization. All right. So sidecar is a sidecar with service meshes, additional software agent sort of thing. And net observe is actually totally agentless approach because we are pulling the metrics underneath OS from eBPF flows. Another approach is agent-based approach or probes, probes. So Stackworks, which Red Hat has acquired two years back now and made fully open source under stackworks.io, this is a probe agent-based network security solution, which can also give you a perspective of what metrics and telemetry available for your services to be consumed externally, also through a single dashboard. All right, I gotta go a little bit quick. All right. So we talked about the platform. We talked about, we haven't talked about how complex is the telco world is. So whenever we go, when I was at Google as well, and Verizon, we were trying to explain to the vendors, right, say AWS, Google, and, and Azure, because these hyperscalers not necessarily understanding how complex telco workloads are. It is the reality that telco workloads need special treatment. And you may say, as a Google VP of engineering, I don't give a shit about being, giving special treatment to any application type. My platform is generic, and if you want to use it, you can use it. Then you ask this question, okay, you know what, VP of engineering, how can I do multiple interfaces for my telco workloads? And the guy says, Wait, this is kind of a conversation back to two and a half years, what do you mean multiple inter interfaces? You have only ETH0 primary CNI. You don't need additional interface. This is what the containers are designed for. You say, no, 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 no. Look at this 3GPP diagram have this architecture for IMS, have this 4G, 5G, and 6G coming, service-based architecture. You see multiple lines going out of AMF? It, means mul it, could, it, should, could, it could be a multiple interface out of this container or a service. And he says, no, 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 we don't do that. <laughs> and then you realize, okay, and you take this approach to your you know, beloved vendor, say Ericsson, Nokia. My dear NAP, for your 5G, 6G solution, I can only offer you a single interface and I will not let you change the MTU. By the way, there's no such thing as VLAN. And they will tell you, sorry, I cannot work with you. Because there is a requirement pending in 3GPP specification saying that you have to isolate each interface for not only from security, but also performance perspective. Because say you're signaling, signaling sitting in a signaling domain, and your media passing through more, say, DMZ domain, okay? So there's a segregation of domains in, in telecom. And then these platform vendors, could be Google, AWS, and Azure, realize this. But along as Red Hat, we have been partnering with these vendors, what you're seeing here from Mavenir down to Nokia, down to Ericsson, and others. We are working with these network equipment providers for these softwares to be able to deploy it on any virtualization platform. Could be OpenStack, could be OpenShift. So, along with the 3GPP compliance. So this certification, that's why it's important, to sit on a platform so you can collect these metrics properly, so you can observe them, so you can scale them, so you can predict what's coming your way. All right, so far platform applications. What is special, you may say, give me more data points for being a special application for telco workloads. So what you're seeing here, the left side is taking an alert state for a diameter interface of a particular CNF. And the right state, the top one is AMF, sorry, SMF metrics. Bottom is the AMF metrics taken from a production, and not a production, pre-production environment in our sandbox environment. So you may see different, different data. 
The metrics obviously showing all these three GPP metric names along with the time series data. This is long time series data. So metrics use, are usually time series data. Logs are sometimes embedding them inside, sometimes not. Alerts are generated based on the events on a particular application as well as hardware. Able to use this, back to the hint, you need to have a domain expertise. So us, Red Hat, we are a platform software company. Yet, for certification, we are working with these NAPs. We are helping to use our platform and frameworks with their domain expertise for their data so they can create insights like this. Go. If you're seeing, able to read this, this insight said that, says that it's predicted that network congestion will happen due to lower MTU size cause fragmentation. That's interesting. So there's another one. Increase in jitter and latency predicted in the next 12 hours for the UPF. So it is predicting there will be a traffic and, and jitter and latency issue with this particular UPF, which is a user plane function, which is carrying your user payloads for breaking out the internet. So how do, how do they do that? Because this partner, which is AOPS1, we have other partners like this as well, has born in this domain, telco domain, to do service assurance. They are so deeply talented and knowledgeable about telco data for, from OSS world. And then they, we come up with the use cases about their domain expertise, such as root cause analysis with network fabric. How can I predict and identify root causes tying into network data that we collect? Or it could be, for example, the net observer operator collecting eBPF data, could be switching routers, they're collecting their you know, metrics from their serial interface. And the NFSCNF performance bottlenecks, like you just saw on the UPF jitter and latency case. Hardware failure prediction, back to the storage case. If there's a heat increase, the lifespan of a storage goes down as well. All right. There are not many solid state chip makers in the world. There are a few of them. Most of the other NAPs are buying those chips from them and building their storage cards or storage solutions. The difference it, between each of these vendors, say EMCs, say Hitachi, Fujitsu, is how that board designed to address what environmental requirement, say vibration, heat, noise, dust, okay? If there's not enough sealant or covering on top of the storage, and if you're running this storage solution at the edge, which is subject to higher heat and, and, and vibration than normal data center, that storage will not li last long. So if you can collect that ma matrix and data, you can swap out right on time before there's an outage at edge for your local breakdown in your stadium, for example. All right, we are almost at the end of the time. So one of the key things is having a single pan Pain of view from, say, starting from hardware with IPMI integration and so on and so forth, Dell I, DRAG, ILO, whatever you are using, and platform level with OpenShift, OpenStack, and VMware, and then collecting all this data and running through anomalies detection and offering you a single dashboard. Say, I have, say, 100 OpenStack deployments I can see from single pane for the 4G, 5G sites. If you can see it, it says this one is, is a 4G site. The one below is a 5G SA site. Well, you see here, actually. 5G SA South, 5G SA North, 4G Core East and West from a single dashboard. This is application layer observability again. And back to radio access network KPIs dashboards. If you see that this is the uplink and downlink delays for jitter and latency. And also integration into the other data sources. It could be Prometheus. It could be... Grafana, and then going back to this is the 5G core, and then insight generation. So if I wrap it up, what we have talked so far, or at least I was kind of monologue way, is we as Red Hat slash IBM offer platform hardware cloud level observability frameworks, tools, and knowledge to be used with telco solutions, telco CNFs and VNFs, because we certified them, we worked them hand to hand, 
And application layer domain expertise for ML, AI, insight generation, we have partners. As well as we can sit down with you, you can say that I want to know, because I'm sitting and living in, say, Iceland. Say, out of the 12 months, I have 10 months are freezing. So I don't need to run my data center cooler all the time. I want to have a predictive data center cooling based on the metrics I'm collecting from my 5G core deployment in this country. We can carve down a very easy solution for you to deploy and leverage that. That will lower your electric bill for per data center. All right. Any questions? This is so true. You cannot buy, say, 4G, 5G observability, but they will try to sell you. If you go AWS, they'll say, we have SageMaker to build GML AI insights. Show me what you're generating as an insight for 5G RAN, 5G core. Show me what you're generating as an insight for my scalability of Ericsson solution, of Nokia solution. Oh, you got to do it yourself. Obviously, I got to do it myself. But who am I? Am I being as a part, a single Verizon or a service provider? Am I be a partner of yours in this journey to build a solution and maintain together? If you notice in the journey of OpenStack, there were many distros. And by 2023, how many distros left? Which one is the biggest for production deployment? Which one you can trust? for your money-making applications. Same going to be happening with the Kubernetes distro. Same going to be with any enterprise application or enterprise platform, enterprise OS. There will be always coming, they call themselves disruptors. But the most important thing is, who will there be with you in the five years time span? Five years is not a long for an application or a business. If you're not succeeding in life in five years, you're not succeeding at all. So. Any questions? Come on. Challenge. Say, Fatih, this is bullshit. Because this. Fatih, I have this problem. No one helped me solve it. Can you answer this question? Questions. Questions, demands. If you have problems, we can sit down and articulate the solutions and see if we can come up with anything that will be a winning one for you. Come on. All right. Feel free to reach out to me through LinkedIn or my email. I'm a humble guy, not necessarily talking much in normal life, but I love fixing problems. It could be a technology gap. We can sit down together and build a solution and upstream together. This is what we do. We generate solutions and we upstream. We buy technology companies and we upstream. We don't do anything proprietary. Everything is upstream. What you may say, people call Red Hat, oh, Red Hat is not an open source company. That's fully ignorant answer. Red Hat is an open source company. What Red Hat makes money is the enterprise side of the solution for giving you proper support, documentation, and consultancy. But the software, the technology, everything is open source. Okay? So the question is, in the network fabric, look at the network fabric and look at open telemetry's aim and purpose. Is there a gap or they can come up together, right? Remember what I said about open telemetry. Open telemetry is not only about specifications or APIs, also the instrumentation ready to use by means of libraries. Say network fabric Vendors, Cisco's, Aristos, Palo Alto's, they are looking at those libraries to use them and instrument them, or they can come up with their own instrumentation compliant with the specifications. We are working with them. Because at the end of the day, as I said, full stack observability from network fabric down to OS, down to application, is the most critical one to have end to end. So we are working with them. And most of the NAP vendors actually going in a VNF, CNF way, say virtual routers, virtual firewall, right? running on our platform already. So we are already instrumenting them with our platform capabilities for observability. If you go to search for CNF VNF catalog in Red Hat, you will see in search for Juniper, you'll see a lot of appliances, virtual appliances down there. Any other questions? No, I want to be respectful to time. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <laughs>